Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. Today is, what is today? Friday, the 15th of May. As usual, we're going to go over the numbers. We're going to talk about vitamin D and vitamin C today. I'm going to keep it pretty short because um, it is Friday and I want to get out of my office uh, for the evening. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. In case you don't know, I'm board certified in emergency medicine. I run a functional medicine clinic as well. I've been practicing emergency medicine for many, many years. Do work in the emergency department currently, and so I, I have a little bit of an insight on what's going on with the pandemic, and I try to give a little update every day. Start out with the numbers, 4.5 million diagnosed cases worldwide, 303,000 deaths, 1.6 million people have recovered here in the United States, 1.45 million cases, 87,000 deaths, and uh, 254,000 people have recovered, which is great. In my state of North Carolina, a little over 17,000 cases, 641 deaths. We've actually, in the last 24 hours, had the biggest one-day jump in cases in North Carolina um, that we've seen before. Um, so um, we are opening up at the same time, so we'll see how those numbers play out over the next couple weeks. As I've sort of said before, these numbers are going to be important to watch, especially over the next few weeks, because those numbers, as we open things up, if we start seeing big spikes, then it's going to tell us something about our opening plans. If we don't see big spikes, then our ability to progress to the next stages of opening are going to be uh, much more likely to occur. I had quite a bit of, of questions about vitamin D, and I've put out a supplement sheet for folks that are interested that basically uh, has a, a number of supplement recommendations to boost your immune system to kind of stave off COVID. And one of the, you know, two of the things were vitamin D and vitamin C. And interestingly, Northwest University just came out with a big study looking at data from a bunch of different places, not only the United States, but China, Germany, uh, England, Switzerland, uh, the UK, uh, South Korea, and Spain, and they conglomerated all this data together. And what they found was that the patients that um, with vitamin D deficiency had a 17.3% chance of developing severe COVID. And the patients that had normal levels of vitamin D had a 14 and, a, and some change risk of developing severe COVID. Uh, so those people that had adequate vitamin D levels had about a 15%, 16% reduction in risk compared to those um, that had uh, low vitamin D levels. So, you know, it's an important point. We, we always, in my clinic, we always stress vitamin D because it's, an, it's actually a hormone and it has a lot of beneficial effects, not only in terms of cardiovascular health and brain health and bone health, but also has some immune modulating functions as well. And so taking a good dose of vitamin C and, and more importantly, maybe getting out in the sun for 10, 15 minutes a day, those are things that are gonna be really important. Uh, also, we've, we've talked about vitamin C, and vitamin C is a potent antioxidant. There's many, many studies done on vitamin C and its beneficial effects in inflammatory disease, and we think it's got some antiviral effects as well. And again, in my supplement sheet, I've recommended people take vitamin C as well. And there is a study, a clinical trial started in China giving high-dose IV vitamin C. And there's been a lot of anecdotal reports of people using IV vitamin C. As a matter of fact, it's on one of the protocols in our hospital that people are giving it, but it hasn't really been studied yet. And so very often we use these things while, because we think they might work and we may not have all the data. Um, interestingly, though, there is a prior study back a few years ago that actually showed a fairly significant decrease in mortality in ICU patients that develop ARDS, which um, is this severe inflammatory condition in the lungs that's associated with the cytokine storm. We think that both vitamin D and vitamin C may blunt some of those effects of, of cytokine storm. Uh, I'm going to keep it short tonight. We're going to end it there. You know, I want to you know mention that we do use these things in the hospital. Uh, vitamin D, not so much, but IV vitamin C is being used, just like hydroxychloroquine. You know, I think that there's this this idea out there that people are ignoring these potential drugs. We don't know whether hydroxychloroquine is really an effective treatment against COVID. That doesn't stop us from using it, though. It's still being broadly used, uh, you know, throughout the country. What I can definitively tell you, it's not a cure. But, you know, but we have lots of patients in our hospital that are on it. 
And one of the reasons for some restrictions being placed on its use willy-nilly is because, you know, there are people that have lupus, that have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, that have other problems that need those drugs. And if we start letting people prescribe hydroxychloroquine to anybody, then the supply will quickly go away. Right now we've got a pretty adequate supply and that supply is, is suitable for the people that need it for their chronic diseases and for the folks that are really severely ill in the hospital that need it for COVID-19. But we don't have any evidence that it is a cure-all for, for this, but there are quite a few studies going on. And again, the results have been mixed so far, but you know we're hopeful that maybe we will discover one or two drugs in the future that are really effective. I'm going to end it there. As usual, if you find this valuable, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell so you get updates. Follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. I'll be back tomorrow. Wash your hands. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Take care of everyone else. Have a great weekend.